recently I watched Superfast Matt's video on why we should add a 3D scanner to our toolbox. It inspired me to share my workflow to get physical objects into CAD using photogrammetry and exclusively open source software. The requirements for this process are a camera such as your smartphone and an NVIDIA GPU that supports CUDA. To begin with, we will need to prepare our object. Photogrammetry has trouble with transparent and reflective surfaces. As an example, scanning this reflective container as it is will give us a poor result like this. How you prepare your object is a trade-off between high scan quality, low cost and easy cleaning. If your part is simple and you only need certain areas to be reconstructed, you can cover these parts with masking tape. While this will result in lower quality, cleanup is simple and cost is close to none. For more complex parts, you will want to use something that can be applied as a spray. A cost-effective solution is foot powder, which can be wiped or washed off. If you won't be able to wash your object, commercial products such as sublimating scanning sprays disappear after a few hours without leaving any residue. After covering the container in foot powder, the 3D model is a lot better. After we treated the surface, we want to place our object in a well and evenly lit area. Next to it, we place an object with known dimensions. Later, this will allow us to scale the mesh to real-world dimensions. In this case, I will be using a ruler. The next step is to take pictures. After we start it, we may not change or move anything. That will confuse the photogrammetry software. Take pictures orbiting around the object. The amount of pictures depends on the complexity of the object, but 100 is a good starting point. Focus on areas where precision is important to you. Keep camera settings, such as focal length, consistent. The rest of the workflow takes place at your PC. Create a project folder and copy the pictures into an image folder. We open Meshroom and create a project file in our project folder. After importing the images, we need to verify that the camera intrinsics are set. Meshroom extracts that information about your camera from image metadata and completes it with an internal database. If your metadata is incorrect or your camera is not in the database, follow this guide to add your device. We will have to change the texture file format to PNG because EXR is not supported in MeshLab. Now save the project and press Start. After Meshroom finished processing, double-click the Texturing and Meshing node to preview the textured and untextured mesh. Now we use MeshLab to scale and clean up our mesh. We open MeshLab and import our textured mesh that Meshroom created for us. You will find it in your project folder under Meshroom Cache, Texturing and a folder of seemingly random characters. A few tricks to make MeshLab more usable. If your mesh is large and you are experiencing performance issues, it might be that MeshLab is using the legacy immediate mode rendering instead of the more performant buffer object rendering. To fix that, we can configure MeshLab to dedicate more GPU memory to the geometry. Open the Options window and select Max GPU Mem Dedicated to Geometry. Here you can increase the memory in megabytes and save your changes. After restarting MeshLab and loading the mesh, you should see PO rendering mode in use. While MeshLab does not have an undo button, you can always duplicate your current layer and apply changes to that copy. If you don't like the result, delete the layer and try again. Use the measuring tool to measure the distance of our reference dimension. When using a MeshLab tool, press Escape to switch between a tool and manipulating the trackball. Calculate a scaling factor by dividing the real-world dimension by the MeshLab dimension. Use this factor in the scale filter and make sure to use a period as the decimal separator. If you now can't see your model properly, use the reset trackball option to recenter it. At this point, we hide the textures as we don't need them anymore. We want to orient and translate the mesh so that it is mostly centered and the floor lies in the XY plane. Use the selection brush tool to select faces that are in a plane and run the Rotate to fit to a plane filter.
After resetting the trackball and clearing the selection, we can turn on the X, Y and Z axes to confirm the mesh is aligned. If it is still flipped, use the rotate filter to turn it by 180 degrees. At this point we trim away the parts of the mesh we don't need. Use the Select Faces inside a Polyline tool. Draw a polyline, press Q to add to the selection and I to invert. Once happy with the selection, delete the selected faces and vertices. To make a selection, it can be beneficial to enable the orthographic camera. I will repeat the same trimming steps for the floor without inverting the selection this time. The Remove Isolated Pieces filter is useful to remove small blobs that aren't connected to the rest of the mesh and smaller than a specified diameter. The default settings work well. There are several filters we run to repair our mesh so that later filters don't fail with error messages. The ones I use are Remove Duplicate Faces, Remove Duplicate Vertices, Remove Unreferenced Vertices, Remove Zero Area Faces and Repair Non-Manifold Edges. The mesh we have now has too many faces and vertices to be useful in CAD software. There are many filters to simplify our mesh. Quadratic edge collapse decimation works well and allows us to specify the target number of faces. Here I use 100,000. I've also had good experiences with surface reconstruction screen poisson, remeshing isotropic explicit remeshing and uniform mesh resampling. To visualize the changes better, we can hide faces and show points or the wireframe. Experiment with different filters and don't forget to duplicate your layer. Our last step in MeshLab is to export to an OBJ file. At this point you have your mesh and can use it with any CAD software of your choice. I will show how I use FreeCAD, an open source parametric modeler. I import the mesh using the Mesh Design Workbench and create a shape from the mesh using the Part Workbench. I create a new body in the Part Design Workbench and create a subshape binder to get the mesh shape into the body. I change its appearance by disabling transparency to make selecting vertices easier. A process I find useful is to attach a datum plane to the mesh with the help of three vertices. I can then attach a sketch to that plane and draw geometry with the mesh as a reference. This sketch allows me to measure dimensions which would be hard to take physically or create new geometry. That was it. Easy, right? Jokes aside, while this process is quite complex, it allows you to get started with 3D scanning without first having to invest into specialized hardware or software. I highly recommend you watch Superfast Matt's video to see which tools are available to you once you reach the limits of photogrammetry.